真的重庆吗？嗯，明Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Oh, hari ini. 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 Oh, hari Because if you put iPhone, then how do I know who you, who you are? All right. So that iPhone, I saw you here. Mana tadi? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Kahani. This iPhone, don't put iPhone. Okay. Put your name. I I think I remind everybody again. You know, again and again. I told you earlier that use your own your own name. Because if you use iPhone, then who are you? All right. I, I don't consider you in my class. All right. If you use iPhone, please, please uh, don't come to my class. All right. Okay. Here. Yeah. Who is this iPhone? Who is this iPhone? Can you can you respond to me? Who is that iPhone? Who is using the name iPhone? Ah, here. Yeah. Who is the person? Who is, who is that person, iPhone? Can you talk to me? Otherwise, uh, I will consider you as someone do not belong here. Yes, sir, okay, I'm iPhone, iPhone, who are you? What is your name? Yeah. Okay, iPhone. Who, who are you? What is your name? I, I just saw his face. Uh, do you understand me? Uh, please use your own name, okay? Replace that iPhone with your own name. Do you, do you understand that? Okay, I, I saw your, you know, you were, yeah, yeah. So put your name as Maxi, Maxi, Maxi Jun, okay? Put, put your real name, okay, thank you. Uh, okay, for today, I will finish up this chapter number number three on the externality. I hope you know we can finish this up today. And uh, we were talking about before we leave the class last week. We were talking about the course theorem. So I think we ended up with the limitation of the course theorem. Because theorem has a limited scope, uh, it can work, you know, if the number of parties or the number of people involved are small. In other words, if the third party or the affected party is, is a few people, then they can bargain with what with uh, with a negligible 
transaction costs, you know, and then you can get together easily. Also, the same apply to the one who contribute to the to the externality. If the contributor of the externality or the generator of the externality is small in number, like you know your 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 housemate or your roommate playing loud music, you know you know who is the source of the pollution. So you can negotiate, all right, uh, smoothly. But if the generator of the externality uh, consisting of many firms or many people, like if you hear loud music in the whole building, okay? So there are many people who, who, who are creating the music. Now, who are they? So to identify them, it costs, it costs a lot in time or it costs a lot also in, in, in your money, all right? So that we create a big transaction cost. Similarly, if we know there is only one company that costs the negative externality, then we can bargain with them directly. But if there are many firms, you know, so it's more difficult. So cost theorem can only work in a small setup, all right? Um, that, that is one. The other one, uh, the other issue is property right. Now the, in reality, sometimes, you know, property right is not well defined. Uh, like in the case of your, you and your roommate, who has the right? Do you have the right to, to, to silence or does he have the right to loud, to, to sound? So it's not clear, okay, in the law. So therefore, uh, in reality, you know, some cases the property right is not clearly defined. So that will need the government, okay, that will need intervention of the authority so that there will be some, some uh, agreement. Uh, but cost theorem, these are the limitations. Okay, a, a few of the limitation of the cost theorem. So therefore, to solve that problem, the government will come in, you know, the government will play its role in the, in the reduction of the negative externality or in case of positive externality, uh, we are not, we don't want a reduction. You want more of uh, the quantity. So therefore, what we do next is we are going to look at the government. All right, how the government can, can intervene and generate the the social equilibrium outcome. So let's start with first case in which we look at the negative production externality. So this is the, the government, all right? So here, you know, the government intervention, we will want to achieve the social equilibrium. So how, all right? So we start with the first case, that is the negative production externality. the case of the cement factory. So as you know, due to the negative externality in production, the, the market produces too much output and the society wants less, okay? So how do you get the social equilibrium? So if you go back to the diagram, by now we should be able to draw the diagram. 
you have the marginal costs, and then you have the marginal social costs with the externality given, the MEC, I'm sorry, that's the MEC. And that's our marginal benefit function, the demand function. The competitive equilibrium is here. And then uh, we have the social equilibrium be there. Now, we were talking about the government, all right? What will the government do or what can the government do? Not will, because there are many other things that the government can do. What the government can do here in order for us to achieve the social equilibrium. That means we start with the competitive equilibrium. You want to move to the social equilibrium. So what will the government do? The government will simply introduce, introduce a tax. They call it T. And that tax, is just equal to the marginal external cost. So that you can move from the, from the competitive equilibrium to the social equilibrium. OK? So simple. How the government do it? The government will just tax. And that tax must equal to the, must equal to the marginal external costs. So when the tax is equal to the marginal external costs, uh, then we achieve the social equilibrium. Okay? All right. Sometimes these things are very sensitive. Okay, so tax will be equal to MEC. Now, the issue here is the government, all right, the government must be able to, it's a, if it's a, it's, a, it's a tough job, must be able to estimate, you know, estimate the external costs. So estimate um, accurately. So, you know, it, it's not easy to estimate, but the government must be able to estimate accurately the external cost so that we can come up with the marginal external cost and that will be the tax. So if, you know, we go back to our example here, the MEC is equal to 10, all right? Uh, then what is the tax? The tax is our condition must equal to the MEC. Tax must also equal to 10. All right, so that is the tax. And we achieve the social equilibrium. And this tax is what you call the PIGU tax. So the tax on the externality. We call it PGB and PG tax. Okay. Now, when you tax, you achieve the social equilibrium, but here, you impose a tax. So the outcome, all right, the outcome to, the outcome of the tax, tax taxation, uh, it is more than just price or quantity decreases from QC to QS. The price goes up to PC to PS. So you have that, okay? You have the adjustment. There will be less output, okay? And there will be higher price. Simply because we internalize the marginal seller cost by, by, by taxing, by taxation. But that is not the end of the story. When you tax, what happened? 
when the government imposes a tax to the firm that produce this regulatory facility, then uh, what happened beyond just simply the the change in the equilibrium? What happened? The government will what? The government will collect the revenue. That is the tax revenue. All right. And of course, the tax revenue will be paid by the firm, and that will go to the government. Now, if you look at the diagram again, how much tax revenue the government will collect? Given the tax is equal to T, all right? So how much government? Or uh, what is the, how do you get the tax revenue? The is it MEC? MEC. Uh, the, the tax is equal to MEC. Okay, the tax is equal to MEC, that one we know. So given the tax is equal to MEC, all right, uh, what is the tax revenue? How do you get the tax revenue? The MEC, MEC. Or looking at the diagram, what is the tax revenue? Then. How do you get the tax revenue? So the tax revenue, okay, will be obtained by what? By multiplying the quantity of the social equilibrium, QS, with what? With PS. Uh, with the? With the tax, okay, with the T. So this area would be the tax revenue. Call it T, okay? Or call it G, okay? Call it G, the tax revenue. So the tax revenue that the government will collect, call it G, that will be equal to the tax, okay? Multiplied by QS, okay? Not QC, QS, because that will be the ultimate uh, or the resulting social equilibrium. And if we go back by our example, the tax is equal to 10. And QS was equal to, you look at the book, how much was QS? I think QS is equal to 40 to 45. Uh, look at that diagram, the diagram of the negative externality. Uh, the social equilibrium is 4.5. So you multiply 10 with 4.5. So what we get is 445. 45 million RM or dollars. Because 4.5 is a million of tons. Okay. And the price is dollar per ton. So therefore, what you get will be $45 million. So that is the tax revenue, which the government will collect. And that was equal to the area which I just uh, shared, okay, the, the red area. Okay, now, by having the tax revenue, uh, what happened next? Okay, you have you have the tax revenue. So, what what is the use of that money? To spend on the people. Uh, the money is going to be spent on the on the affected people, not going to the government. Okay, of course, go to the government, but it should be used to use for uh, compensation. Okay, or for the people, for compensation for the affected party. Or no third party. In other words, the third party. 
not 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 compensation is is quite general you know it's not necessarily going directly to the affected people but in some form of uh, you receive the benefit no? okay benefit so it can be direct and be indirect so if you are talking about indirect compensation the government get the tax revenue that of course you know will be we are not talking about no pollution at all that will be reduction in pollution to some efficient amount okay there is still pollution so that money we are going to be used suppose you know indirect benefit to to the third party uh what 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 are the indirect benefit you know in terms of compensate compensate compensating the the third party because they are affected by the externality so the government has the money so how how do how do you go about that use for what uh, used to provide hospital you know uh, maybe what do you call this counseling okay and then uh, if you give if you want to give direct compensation uh, then you give some cash okay cash or income income uh, benefit compensation so that is the use of the tax revenue all right suppose it supposedly not okay because uh, it's direct okay it's direct tax revenue from that specific polluter which is the cement factory and you have the the you know the third party which is which is uh, clear you know these are the people so that would be the use of the money okay any 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 comment any discussion so generally here okay generally what we are talking about is this in case of negative externality all right what the, how the government uh, can handle the negative externality you tax okay and that tax is equal to the mec now let's look at positive externality so this example you know we are looking at the production opportunity production so pollution okay direct pollution so therefore uh, we tax now let's look at a negative consumption externality okay the example that we're looking at you know you remember example of the negative consumption externality what what example did we consider last time The example was what was smoking uh cigarette smoking yeah uh, cigarette smoking now, if that guy is smoking cigarette you know you look at the the market the society wants less of smoke of cigarette all right so what will the government do in order to achieve the social equilibrium What the government, the government can increase do? the government can increase the cigarette prices. The government increase what? Increase the cigarette price. Ah, in, increase the cigarette price. But how? What, how? By, By increasing the taxes. Yeah. Ah, you still tax, okay? So, uh, negative consumption externality, you tax, and that tax is equal to, of course, the MEC. So. When you tax, the price of cigarette gets higher, and then the consumption of cigarette will be smaller. So let, let's go back to, to the diagram. I think uh, we have that diagram. The negative consumption externality. I think a little bit. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, that's the diagram of the negative consumption externality. Uh, example: cigarette. 
So we can put here a market of cigarettes. So the tax, all right, the tax government imposed is equal to that MEC, which is the negative of the MEB. So tax equal to MEC. And you tax to the consumers. All right, if they buy a secret, they have to pay above the price, they have to pay a tax. So by doing that, you will move from the EC to ES. So again here, you have um, the market equilibrium quantity will go down, all right? And there'll be less smoking, okay? Now the price, okay, the price, when you, you impose tax, uh, that would be some something else. So if you just look at the diagram, last time, you know, the diagram, the PS would be here, all right? Now, when you impose the tax, uh, that that is, you know, uh, there is uh, something uh, different in terms of the price. What price do you pay? Okay, what price do the smokers pay now? even given the tax. So given the tax, which is the MEC, the equilibrium is ES, you move from there, quantity is QS, that's simple. What about the price? And the tax is equal to the MEC here. All right, so that is the MEC, and that tax is the MEC. Okay, now, what price do they pay, the, 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 the smokers? Is this, is it the PS, is it PC, or is it some other price? Look at the diagram. Uh, would be higher than PC. Uh, should be higher than what? PC. Should be higher than PC. Of course, it would be higher than PS. You know the equilibrium is QC, QS, right? The price is here before the tax. If you are given the tax, that means you have to pay above your price, the tax, which is MEC. So therefore, the price that they pay is that price. Okay, call it P1. So the price the smokers pay is actually not PS, it's P1, because you have to pay the tax, all right? So you have to pay higher price than PS, that will be P1. So therefore, the tax revenue will be that area. Okay, so again here, the government get a tax revenue. And that tax revenue is of course, can be used to compensate the people who are affected by the smoke. Okay, as you know, uh, smoking can cause secondhand, you know, secondhand smoke. So the smoker may not be affected, but the people who are staying around the smoker, they are the one that is affected. They are the secondhand, what do you call it? Secondhand smoke, right? secondhand smoke, or oh, secondhand victim. So that government revenue should be used to compensate, okay, the victims. Uh, just like the first case, you know, in terms of health, health coverage of health costs, you know, hospital, uh, some other benefit. So the government should be doing that. So here, all right, here the price is PS. So I, I go back to the, the to our discussion in case of a negative externality all right so the government would be again here you know you have the tax multiplied by qs right so you get the tax revenue but in terms of the price okay in terms of the price the price of the good after tax 
would be equal to P1. P1 is equal to Px plus the T. See? So refer to the diagram again. Okay, refer to the diagram. So people are paying higher price at that QS. What, how much higher? By the amount of the tax. And you know the tax is equal to MEC. Okay? All right, good. So if we consider, okay, let's say uh, PS is equal to 10 ringgit, the tax is equal to 2 ringgit, make it three. Okay? So therefore now, P1, what is P1? P1 is PS plus T. So that is equal to 10 plus 3. So that is 13. So P1 is 13. And the tax will be equal to uh, MEC. And that will be equal to P1 minus PS. So tax is 3. You know, tax is 3. So the MEC is 3. So therefore, you got your government revenue, the tax revenue. Okay. So quite simple, okay? Government policy is quite simple. Negative externality, you just tax. So what about positive externality? Uh, you subsidize. Uh, positive externality, we give subsidy. All right, you give subsidy. So again here, subsidy here, subsidy per unit. Okay, per unit subsidy. Uh, S, right, which is equal to the marginal external benefit. So let's consider our cases of positive externality. Number one, positive consumption externality. So remember negative, positive consumption activity, consumption of a certain good that generate benefit to the society more than your personal benefit. Okay? An example was the vaccination. If people are vaccinated, or what you call in the book, they, they don't call it vaccination, they call it Kapanamu. Uh, in inoculation, okay, sama lah, alright. So there is a benefit. If you look at currently now, you know, if we find the the virus, the what do you call it, the vaccine for this uh, coron COVID nineteen virus, then you know the uh, the social benefit will be much more. Okay, then the personal benefit. So I think the government around the world should contribute, okay, should contribute to the research to, to, to come up with the vaccine, you know, not just relying on certain government. Every government has to do that, especially China, you know, because China, now the biggest export of China is the coronavirus. No more Huawei, because the whole world becomes static. You know, the whole world becomes static. The airlines are going bankrupt. People are more more people are going to be unemployed, and our income is actually going down. So they should act fast, you know, in order to get the vaccine. Okay, come back to here. Positive consumption externality. So we are we are we are saying they should give you or we should subsidize uh, that consumption because the consumption of that good will generate positive benefit to the society. So let me go back to the diagram. Manari diagram. I thought I we we we, we have that diagram. Uh, here. Okay, this is the case where you have positive externality. 
positive consumption activity. So go back to the diagram. Uh, this is the inoculation, okay? Inoculation example of vaccination. So by having the vaccination, the price, or not the price, the benefit to the society is much more than the personal benefit. So therefore, what we do, we give subsidy. So that subsidy equal to the marginal external benefit. Okay, S, oh, the color is not clear. Uh, we use red. The S is equal to MEB. So that MEB is here. So that is how much subsidy you give, all right? Now, let's say you go back to this example here, the, the price PC is 25, and then the social price is 30, yeah. all right? Now that is the social equilibrium price. Now, if you give subsidy, then how much do we actually pay the consumers? So you, 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 you go to the PC, you go to PS, make the comparison. How much do we pay actually given subsidy? Come on, you know, look at the diagram. Uh, compare to the PS, or either you compare to PC, whatever, you know, then uh, what, what, what is our price? Not actually the number, you know, how, you know. how will the price you pay after subsidy compare to the PS or PC? It would be p below than PC. Look at the diagram. Below than PC, sir. Ah, below than PC. Okay, below than PC, you are talking about here. Okay, below than PC, what is the price? Are we talking about somewhere here? So it's not, of course, below than PC. Okay, but to be more specific, we are not talking about PC. We are talking about PS. PS okay. minus the subsidies, right? Uh, so your price that we actually pay is that PS take away the subsidy. So our price should be there. Okay. So the subsidy is the MEB. The price we actually pay, okay, is that price. Call it P2. All right. So if the subsidy is equal to 10, 20 here, you know, they, they, they give you 20. So if you look at the book, this is on page 90, 95. Okay, figure 3.2, page 95. Okay, so the, the social equilibrium is 12. And then the subsidy is equal to the MEB, which is 20. All right. The social price, the social equilibrium price is 30. But with the subsidy, all right, we only pay P2. So P2, 30 minus, minus 20, that is 10. So you pay only 10. All right. Since, okay, why you pay only 10, not 30? Because there is external benefit, all right? There is external benefit. So therefore, subsidize. So that more people can consume the good. So that is the idea. Okay, any question about this? Okay, so we go back to our discussion. <clears throat> So in case of a positive consumption externality, 
So here we just refer to the diagram. Okay, figure 3.2. So uh, since the MEB, all right, is positive, or oh, I already said here, yeah. <coughs> the subsidy is uh, given to be as the MEB. And what you have is that, so I just write the, the subsidy. So now, therefore, okay, after the inter after the subsidy, after the subsidy is given, uh, the the actual price that we pay, or the after subsidy price, we call it P equal to P two. Okay, and that P2 is equal to PS minus the subsidy. Okay, and of course the subsidy is equal to MEB. Uh, our example was MEB is equal to 20. So therefore subsidy is 20, all right? And the PS, as we know, you look at the book, it's 30. So what about P2? P2 is equal to 10. All right, that comes from PS minus the subsidy. Okay, 30 minus 20. So in real life, actually, consumers pay only what? Consumers pay only ten dollars, not thirty dollars, and that is subsidized price. Now, what is the subsidy revenue? No, no, the subsidy revenue. When you give subsidy, it's not the revenue. Uh, you give the subsidy. Uh, that would be the subsidy that you give away, okay? So the total amount of subsidy, oh, I got to check here. Yeah. Any positive, uh, negative consumption, actually, yeah, okay, we, go to, we talk about tax. So here, we are looking at the subsidy you give away, okay? You don't earn the tax subsidy. Subsidy is something that you're going to spend. So the total subsidy, Call it capital S, okay? And that S is equal to what? Equal to subsidy per unit multiplied by QS. So in this example here, the subsidy is 20, QS is 12. So that is how much subsidy you have to give away, all right? And of course, we pay only $10 which is lower than the than the social equilibrium price okay so that is the effect of subsidy on the market number one the government will spend the money on the subsidy number two since it's going to benefit the the other people the, the society the people will pay lower price. So that the quantity consumed will be increased. Okay, so you get QS. Eh? Okay, so that is what you call the effect of the subsidy. Now, why is that so? Okay, why do you subsidize? In this case here, of course, number one, because that generate positive externality, okay? But number two, since it's generate the positive externality, okay? Since there is a positive uh, externality, and you, the society wants more. Okay, so he wants more of this, of, of that vaccination. Now, if you look at vaccination, go to history, all right? Uh, how much do we actually pay for this vaccination? 
just think about when you were small, you know, you ask your mother, you know, especially if we are living in Kampong, how much do you actually pay for the vaccination? Or if you have a small brother or sister, you know, uh, your mother bring him or her to the clinic to get vaccinated, how much do we actually pay? You don't know? Huh? How much do we actually pay? We actually pay zero. Okay? Zero price. Zero RM. It's free. All right? So the subsidy is full subsidy. Why? Because vaccination is important. It generates, ex uh, you know, external benefit to the society, not just to us, you know? So when I was small, I was given vaccination three or four times, you know, from birth up to seven years old. And then another one, I think, uh, before you reach 12 years old. So your arm, you know, there is a mark on your arm that affected by the vaccination. So how much do, do I pay? How much do my parents pay? Zero. Okay, it's full subsidy. All right, full subsidy. Why? Because of the big external benefit. Now, related to that, since the, the consumption generates positive externality, the society wants more. Now, some people cannot afford. Okay, some people cannot afford. Just like we are staying in the village, you know, we cannot afford to pay. So what? Government subsidize. Okay. So government subsidize so that more people can, can consume. Okay, so more people can consume. So you have QC moving to QS. So by giving the subsidy, we achieve the social equilibrium quantity by subsidy. So we pay less. In some cases, we pay zero. Okay, so there are many people in the world. I mean, there are so many people in the society. Some of us cannot afford. So to make sure, you know, uh, more people can consume the good and that good generate positive, positive uh, externality or external benefit, the government will subsidize so that more people can consume you achieve QS. If you just leave to the market, okay, if you just leave to the market, there'll be too few people who will get vaccinated, okay? Too few. Too few will get Q, okay? And I mean consumption. In this case here, too few people will get vaccinated because the price is high. PC. So therefore, the government gives subsidy that you go to QS. Okay. All right. Any question? Now, this subsidy here is, is, is quite important, you know, because there are so many things that we subsidize, you know, on the basis of positive externality or positive external benefit. Now, give me one more. If you read the book, you know, there's another example that give positive externality or that give external benefit positively to the society. So when you have that, the benefit is not only for you, but it's transcend yourself. The benefit goes to the society. Okay, give me one more example. Very, 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 <clears throat> very basic example, you no know, very common example that involve all of us. Uh, what? What about education, sir? Ah, education. I mean, okay. Education. What I want to hear. Okay, education. You get the education. Okay, you get a personal benefit. 
what is your personal benefit? You become, number one, we become educated. Okay? We are no more stupid. Okay? You become educated, that means your critical, your mind will be more critical. You can evaluate things. You can make better decisions. Okay? So when you do that, uh, of course, uh, when you do that, we are we have less tendency to commit crime, okay? It will be less crime. And then you can get, when you get educated, what, what, what is your benefit? Of course, you know, you, you got a better, a better way of thinking, you know, become more critical. Uh, you will get what? More likely, you will get better, way, better quality of life, okay? You, you inshallah you you can you know you can do bet you can become a better businessman or you can work you know get a better income or high higher income okay that's your personal that's your personal benefit on top of that it will benefit the society okay by people that being more educated they commit less crime that benefit the society Okay, and we are we are having critical thinking. You know, you can evaluate things better. That is good for the society. So the politi the politician cannot cheat you anymore. You know, last time when I was small, when come election, they come to the village, they just tell you. Okay, go to the go to the voting booth. Pankoh hogang nih, pankoh nih, pankoh nih. So, you know, at that time, you know, you go to the election, they win, you know, they can win election by majority 70%, 80%. Why? Because we are not educated. We are just told who to vote. Okay? But currently, it's different. Okay? Voters are more educated. So they know how to evaluate. So the government of the day, they just have a simple, literally simple majority from government, you know, and that's good, okay? That's good for the, for the, for the country. You don't have a very powerful government. So there will be less uh, tendency for corruption, you know, things like that. So good for society. So, you know, that will give you positive externality. Any other benefit of education? Are there benefit like you Because uh, I just give you just a few. Uh, that will benefit the society. And, you know, in other words, that will give you a positive uh, externality and positive external benefit. So what do we do? What the government do for education in this country? Or maybe, or not just this country, uh, all other countries. Most of the countries, huh? you know, what, what do we do for education? They, they give free education or fund education. Uh, they give you subsidy. Okay, subsidize education. Why? Because you want more people to be educated because of the external benefit. Okay. Uh, this subsidy can be full subsidy. This is like our elementary education. Okay, in Malaysia, the elementary education from standard one, Bija Satu, up to Tingkatan Lima, okay? From standard one to form five. This is fully stand, uh, subsidy. This is the elementary education. This is one, the one that you should have, basic. Okay, so that we can count, we can read, we can think. Okay, now beyond that, when you go to higher education, still there is a subsidy, but not full subsidy. Lah. You know, we can call it partial subsidy, but that partial subsidy is quite, sub is quite substantial, you know. So if the government don't give subsidy for higher education, there will be less people who can afford education. All right, so with subsidy, more people can afford education more people. If you leave to the market, 
all right you will have too few people too few people can be able to consume education so by giving the subsidy more people can be educated more people can consume education and that will be benefit benefiting the society so this is a good example all right of a positive externality positive consumption externality so i think we have we have looked at the four 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 types of externality right? the positive positive consumption the negative negative production negative consumption the positive positive consumption oh there is another one uh positive production okay so one more positive production so the production of a good all right positive production actually production of a good that contribute external benefit so our example that we were looking at was the apple bee you know apple bee the apple farm benefit the bee hive okay because the beehive can can go to the farm and get honey you know through the through the apple punya bunga bunga apple tu they will extract the honey so that will give uh, external benefit to the hunt, to the beehives so which production do we subsidize the production of apple or what so you, 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 uh, you subsidize the production of apple okay you want more apple farm so therefore you give subsidy because the farm of the apple or the apple farm generate positive benefit okay so you want more of the apple farm so we subsidize apple farm okay so positive externality it works again you know uh if we go back to the diagram where is the diagram um negative production externality i thought i draw that diagram also let me see mana ada diagram ah ni ada positive consumption externality yeah yeah all right so you get the there is a marginal external benefit okay so that marginal external benefit is here which is equal to the negative marginal external cost so therefore the society wants more of that production so therefore you set the subsidy equal to meb so in our apple example the farming of apple should be subsidized so that you will have more more apple farm because it benefit the bee okay all right and uh, we can also think of it as the of that that uh, vaccine you know the vaccine we know the vaccine the vaccination in terms of consumption uh, people consume the vaccination uh, generate benefit but in terms of production you can think also of in terms of production okay in order for more people to benefit from the vaccination you have to produce more of the vaccine okay so the production of vaccine can ex can generate extra benefit so therefore we can also argue that we can subsidize the production of vaccine okay so we can think of it as this one you know the vaccine the vaccine production so subsidize in other words all government in the world should contribute okay should contribute 
give subsidy to the companies or to any government that is doing the research on the vaccine. For example, I think there is a company in the US, there is one company in Switzerland, and there are companies in China, you know, that are working on this, or maybe there is a company in Russia. So other companies, other government, not just, uh, you know, may, may, maybe private individual or companies, subsidize, you know, contribute to, to that research because it will benefit not just other people, you know, it benefit the whole world. So the bottom point is, or the bottom line is, you give subsidy so that you will get an increase in the output. So that will be basically the government intervention, okay? In terms of the externality, positive, subsidize, negative, you tax, okay? So the, the, the thing here is, of course, government must be able to accurately estimate the external benefit and also the external cost. And, we, and that is not easy, you know? Uh, they have to do the research and the study in order to come up with the estimate of the externality effect to a certain extent, uh, accurately reflecting the actual positive or negative cost. Okay, I think uh, that will do it for chapter number three. So look, look at the book, okay? Uh, actually, what I did cover is up to up to 104, page 104. After that, that will be on the Coast Theorem. Okay, you can read the Coast Theorem. I did the discussion, but not that, not that detail, okay? And then on the environmental protection, uh, you don't have to worry about that one, you know? If you want to do more, you can take environmental economics. But what we do here is we just uh, learn a little bit okay about environmental economics if there is a negative production externality you know in case of the cement factory you tax okay so that is a very general principle if you want to learn more about all those things you can read the the the, the last part of the book you know there are so many environmental policy go into detail but we don't do that you know, if you want to just go read that part. Okay, all right. So that will be our coverage on chapter number three. Any question? Anything? Okay. All right. Okay, good. So I want you to look at the problem number one. Okay, problem. Problem number one. Okay, now I want you to do it now. Okay, spend five minutes doing that problem. Uh, you have the problem where you, you are given the demand, you can bring the supply, you are given the marginal, marginal cost, uh, you want to find the social equilibrium. Yeah, so do it now because I want to discuss on how to do this question. So you, you do first, okay? And then uh, we will discuss. Okay, do it. I'll give you now is one, uh, 11 o'clock, uh, seven minutes. And then I, I, will, I will, will discuss.
Okay, you, you got the first part. Okay, first part is getting the market equilibrium. Okay, so to get the market equilibrium, demand equal to supply, I don't think there is a problem. You should be able to get it. Okay, everybody got that part? The market equilibrium will just equal to demand equal to supply. You are given the supply, given the, the demand, so you get the price and you got the quantity for the market. So anybody got the answer for this? So for that part, you know, you just equate demand supply, you get it. Now the second part, what is the efficient? Now, when the book say efficient in the sense of the externality, that would be the social equilibrium. Okay, because we know in the presence of externality, the market will no, is no more efficient. The optimum condition or the efficient level output is the one that satisfies the social equilibrium. Okay. So in the case of negative externality, negative production externality here. So what is the equilibrium condition for this one? Because you have the external cost, okay? The marginal external cost. So what is the social equilibrium condition? MSC equal to MB. Pardon me? MSC equal to MB. Uh, the condition is the MSC equal MB. Okay. The market equilibrium, marginal benefit equal to the marginal cost. So when you have the externality, all right, when you have the externality, either it is negative or positive you identify it. Does it give you the marginal external benefit or does it give you the marginal external cost? Okay, of course you have marginal, if you have the positive identity, there will be marginal external benefit. So the, the social equilibrium will be the marginal cost equal to the marginal social benefit. If negative identity, you have the marginal external cost then the equilibrium with the MSC equal MEB. So must be able to identify that. Okay, that's very important. So how do you get the MSC? The MSC is equal to what? Is equal to MC plus MEC. Given MEC is equal to 20, so you will get the MSC equal to MC plus 20. Question is, which is very important and basic, this MC. How do you get that MC? Which function are we talking about? Okay, so this is what I want to, I want to share with you. Now, when we talk about the marginal cost, we are talking about the price as a function of Q, okay? Not, okay, not Q function of the price. Not this one, okay, we're talking about this. So when you have the MSC equal to the MC plus MEC, the MC that we're talking about is the marginal cost price function of the output level. All right. So if you look at the question, you are given the what? The supply. Supply. Do you, you you have what? You have Q a function of P. You have Q equal to five thousand P. Okay. Q five thousand P. You need that. 
you don't need you don't need this one okay we need p as a function of q and similarly for the demand function you have q equal to 4 400,000 minus 1000 p again here you got q function of p okay so for the marginal cost what you need all right you need p function of q you are given q function of p okay so what do we do you have to rewrite all these functions okay rewrite so if you look at the supply function if you rewrite the function p function of q what do we get just give me the function p as a function of q what is the new function then p equals what q huh? divided by 5000 ah so from here you will get p equal to 1 over 5000 q so this is the one that we need for the mec okay for the msc so the msc that is our mc so the mc is equal to this form all right no that one okay that one is wrong so you will have to have the price as a function of q then you can get the msc okay any question so make sure you know make sure that is clear okay if it is not clear i want you to go home do it again if you have a problem uh either you raise it in the whatsapp i think whatsapp uh, okay or you or you can do this but that one i need to, to to make assignment you know or maybe i'll give you or if you want to use classroom i don't know whether you can you can put that in in the classroom or maybe you can you know i'm not sure if you put something in the classroom i will check okay uh so that's what you need to do and of course the demand function you need also to rewrite uh, p in terms of q so then you will be able to get the correct qs the correct ps for the market equilibrium okay there is no problem okay the market equilibrium as uh, as as it is given in the question uh, you write Q in terms of P or P in terms of Q, it doesn't matter. But when you are looking at the externality, uh, we have to write the functions P in terms of Q, and then you add to the MEC. Or if it is a positive externality, you add to, you know, then you are talking about the marginal benefit. So again, same thing. You will have for the marginal benefit, the demand function, P as a function of Q, and then add to the marginal external benefit. Okay, any any question about that? Any, anything? If you are not clear, uh, let me know. Don't just keep quiet. Okay, because now uh, we we are no more first year. You know, you are second year, third year, fourth year. Uh, if you have anything, just raise it up. Don't just keep, don't just be keep quiet. All right. Uh, be more active, you know. I, I like, I like uh, if you participate more because otherwise I'm talking by myself. Yeah, I do not know whether you are asleep or you are, you know, you are eating or you are whatever. I don't see you. You know, this is uh, one strange thing about online class. I know your name, but I never know how you look like. You know. So it's really different. If you have a face-to-face -face class, uh, I, I know your face, you know, I may know your face and sometimes I forgot your name, but at least I know who you are, you know. Uh, but this online is actually, uh, we don't know each other, you know. So if you, if you talk more often, uh, then, uh, we, we we can get that communication better okay so what i'm saying is 
If you have anything to say, just go ahead, say it. All right? Of course, but related uh, to what we were talking about. Uh, but, you know, uh, I, I'd like to hear more, you know, more, more sound from you. Uh, rather, than, rather than just being so quiet. Of course, there are a few people who are talking. So continue talk, okay? Continue talking. Those a few people that contribute to the class, continue to be talking. Right? Don't just be keep quiet later on. And of course, I, I want more people to be also participating. Okay. All right. I think that's it for today. So we are done with the activity. Next week. Yes, sir. Uh, no, next week. Uh, next class, we will be beginning with chapter number four. That is on the public good. Okay, okay. Yeah. I have a curious question again. Uh, because you, you've mentioned about taxes and subsidies, but from what we've seen in the in real world where the government actually implement these things, we've only seen uh, less, uh, less on taxes, like for example, on pollution and pollutants. But more on subsidies, like for the positive externalities. Why is that so? Actually, I I I I I didn't get you. You know, because it's not that it's it's your question. Because the mm -hmm. sound, you know, the oh, sound sorry. I didn't get. Uh, can you make it again? I okay, want to uh, focus sorry. on uh, on your on your sound. Okay. Uh, um, I, talk louder. Talk louder. What, what I what I said uh, what I asked was that um, we have like for example with the cases in Salamo where they actually have been the pollution constantly. So what what are the government why are government putting more implementation to prevent these things from happen like in the form of taxes? Like we have not seen that coming up. Like what are the reasons for the government not to Oh you mean you mean in Salamo case where you have the water pollution? Yeah, that's an example. Yes. Uh, of course, you know <laughs> that is a uh, that is. I I think the government can implement certain policy. You know, to improve the situation. But the problem is, uh, I I don't I don't know I don't think so. Uh, they they are not going to use the tax. You know, as a policy. They are more using the environmental economics uh, policy. In other words, um, they may require, you know, all those firms or polluters to reduce pollution by law. Okay, they may, they may introduce uh, one law that require all these companies to reduce pollution. But that is another issue the the monitoring factor you know and the enforcement uh, you have the law but it's not enforced it's not monitored so at the end of the day when there is a problem uh, you you don't know you know you you're confused uh, as to what causes the problem you know so it, it's um, it's, it's it's not that easy, you know. But if I am the government, you know, it's not difficult. It's not that difficult to find the firms, you know, the companies that is polluting the river. You can go from the from the upper part of the river down to the point of pollution. You can locate that company. It's not difficult. But I think the, there are other problems. So if you found them, you know, just tax them. So you don't have to tax like what we are doing now. You just, you just give them what? You just give them a heavy fine. So that is a tax. You know, one time tax. You make the, you make the, the crime, I will tax you. Okay, one million dollars. So make sure that the tax, you know, is high enough to deter other people to pollute. If, you know, if you start by saying, oh, these, polluters, 
uh, are not the are not the companies. So you are already defending those companies. So 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 the problem, you know, uh, it, it's more than <laughs> what you see by your eyes, you know. I think uh, some some other things are involved, you know. Uh, because until now, <laughs> that kind of, you know, the water pollution has been recurring. It's not just once, it's already occurring twice. So if, if you still cannot solve that problem, uh, something must be wrong. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, <laughs> Does it answer uh, your question? Yeah, you but for the record, it did not happen twice. Uh, this month, uh, meaning that on, in October, it has happened for six times, the, the river pollution in Slavo. Uh, what? It doesn't six happen times. twice? Six times. Six times? Ah, more okay. than twice. You know, what I know was twice. Because that is affecting the Gomba area where I live. Uh, but it's more than that. So... Yes, sir. I think uh, the government has to put more effort. Like the federal government and the state government has to work together. Uh, I think it's like another problem is the government. Federal government, uh, PN. State government, PH. Sometimes they don't work together. Even for the, you know, for the COVID-19 cases, you know, the state government is asking for more information, which they didn't get from the federal government. So, this government, even though you are coming from different coalition, they should work together, lah, you know, for, for the benefit of the people, for the maslaha of the ummah, you know. You remember your, your article that I asked you to, read, to, to give for Simon one? You know, yes, what sir. is the key word? Maslaha, you know, the maslaha yes. of the ummah, the maslaha of the society. That is our main consideration for the government. So, <laughs> so uh, reality is, is more complex than, than uh, theoretic theory. <laughs> Understood, sir. Thank you. Okay. All right. So anything, you know, you, 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 you raise me up again, you know, in WhatsApp uh, or you can PM me. All right. So any other things? Okay, I will stop here because uh, probably there is another class coming up. So I will see you again on, on, on Thursday. Hopefully by that time, you know, we can discuss a little bit about the assignment number one. So you go through again the articles, assignment one. Uh, probably on Thursday, we will discuss briefly on that one. Okay, so I'll see you again. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Walaikum salam. Walaikum salam. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, sir.